Good. Aaron Cassidy, thanks for being here. Uh, you have just, as I can say now, conducted the first recording of Eric Onya's piece, his very last piece probably, which he was working on before he died, autumn 2019. And it's not accidental that we could ask you to rehearse and conduct that because you have a long relation with Eric and you you had met him. Could you tell us about yeah. that? Uh, so Eric and I were students together in Buffalo, New York. He was finishing his PhD, I started in 1998, um, and he was finishing his PhD just as I was starting. Mm -hmm. um, he conducted the very first real piece of mine, the first piece that really feels like it's yeah. a piece. An ensemble mine. piece. Or it's an ensemble piece yeah. for, yeah, for five, for five instruments, um, which he conducted in, it would have been June of 1999. And after he finished his PhD, he joined the staff. And so I took classes with him. Mm -hmm. um, I took his orchestration. You were an advanced student, and that was one yeah. of your first major pieces. Then, right? It was. It's the first piece that feels like yeah. it's really mine, <laughs> rather than being a student. Yeah, piece. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, he t he taught this amazing orchestration class, which was about how really how instruments work, about instrumental mechanics, about why the keys are drilled where they are, why the holes on the flute are where they mm -hmm. are, why brass instruments work how they, they do. And I, that's how I teach orchestration to my students. Yeah. Now. And did you get the impression he was a contemporary music guy above all, or was it yeah. about music yeah. in general? Oh, I mean, so Eric, <laughs> Eric had the most spectacular brain. Um, just the biggest brain. He spoke every language you could possibly imagine. So I remember still vividly, we would, anytime we had a guest composer who would come and, and give a guest lecture, he would greet them in whatever language they spoke, in French, in German, in Spanish, in Japanese, mm -hmm. in whatever. Um, just totally, totally fluid. And uh, yeah, amazing ears as well. Impressive. And then um, you stayed in contact or you went different ways probably he wasn't yet in europe he wasn't it was yeah so he he went initially to birmingham yeah. and taught in birmingham for a while before he went to to basel yeah. we so i teach now at the university of huddersfield where i'm a professor and he um was in basel we have an exchange program with basel so we actually had several visits right. back and forth we had him as a guest yeah. i did some guest lectures in in basel as, as well yeah and the piece you have now conducted it to, to somebody who hasn't heard it before, it might as well sound like early music. Yeah. Or, uh, what's your impression? What happened? What, what happened when he composed it? The, so the funny thing is, I didn't remember until I started working on this score that my interest in the Ars Tilior came from Eric. So it was something that I'm pretty sure that he introduced me to in the in the late 90s, yeah. and I got completely obsessed with it. And I was, you know, going through um, Chantilly manuscript and yeah. doing my own kind of notation transcriptions of the Chantilly. Uh, and uh, you were fascinated like, by the complexity yeah, of, of the rhythm, course. the construction. Of, of course, that you have these rhythms that appear in the late 14th century that look like. Boulez. Yeah. It looks like rhythms that appear in the mid twentieth century. Yes. So, yeah. So he had this fascination with that same that same repertoire with the kind of Ars Nova into the Ars Obtilior and made this piece, which really is a Ars Obtilior study. Yes, it's. Um, I believe he he has written more of that yeah. early music pieces before, but when we listen to it, it sounds rhythmically complex, but um, there are actually no, if, if we can't see the score, let's, let's say we, as a listener, we just hear it and we don't see the score, um, we might think, oh, there are complicated rhythms and the, the meter is changing somehow, but uh, it looks even more complex on the paper, <laughs> doesn't it? So, so the, it's a really difficult thing for the ensemble, for the singers. Yeah because we have to have some agreement about what I'm going to do with my hands. <laughs> Something that gives us some alignment, but they are in the back of their mind trying to maintain whatever their individual metrical material is. So at the, the most complex, there are five separate meters stacked on top of one another, and I, you know, I only do one of them. Um, but they're trying to count in the big 
the big beats. Yes, but you're the one to synchronize them with each other. Exactly. And have you, I mean, can you explain the text or the, the, what, what yeah. the text is happening in the yeah, text? Yeah, so that, that's, that's a crucial question. So the, the text is very self-referential. Yeah. The, the text is all about numbers, numerology, proportion, and their relationship to music. And it's this, these two texts from the late, 16, late 15th century and early 16th century, I think right on the, the turn of the century. In Latin. Um, in, yeah. in Latin. Um, and quite playful texts about um, the, the ways in which the kind of proportions that sit in the background of music become this, you know, kind mm. of mo moves you towards the heavens. And at the same time, so you have these texts mostly in the upper three voices. The lower two voices sing a cantus firmus with Kyrie text um, drawn out over these incredibly complicated mm. um, long repeating patterns that are completely independent that occasionally get interrupted by um, these little dances. <laughs> so yes. these moments yeah. where the text kind of freezes and the music, I don't know, sort of bubbles to the, to the surface and they play these little games with um, rotating patterns where each, each player, each singer has their own pattern that's a different duration and they, you know, so the, the way the whole piece works is everything starts together, slowly these proportions get out of sync, and you get to this place where you have five layers, yeah. and then things slowly, like a clock, kind of tick back into, into alignment. To, uh, yeah. You get these mi micro rhythms which establish themselves in, uh, for a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, but I think that's about it because we need this as an introduction. Perfect. And, and we are hoping to see you back oh, with that with uh, at other occasions and with your own music as well. That would be great. Of course, and um, thank you for this. Yeah. Thanks great. for the opportunity. Yeah. Great. great. Okay, that's fine. It's I'll do a voice over or something. Some messages, but yeah. or something. Yeah.